Okay, so we have a panel of industry experts here that work in different environments of the data center domain. I'm going to have each one of them introduce themselves first and then give two minutes about their company, what they do. Obviously, we've already heard from Terry, so we'll introduce yourself again, maybe a little bit about your company, and then we'll go down the line and we'll start with questions from that perspective. Are we just passing it along? <laughs> okay, it looks like we have one mic here, the expense that we spared. <laughs> so. Well, it was either multiple mics or sandwiches, so I guess they prefer the sandwiches. Uh, my name's Kerry Higby, and I'm the Global Director of Data Center Solutions and Services at the Steven Company. We are a cabling connectivity manufacturer, but my particular job is working with end users doing data center design and structure audits, data center audits, all that kind of good stuff, and working with the standards and also all of the active electronics manufacturers. My name is uh, Keith Jackson. I'm the Eastern Regional Sales Director with Raritan. Raritan has been in the IT space for over 25 years. We focus on infrastructure management, uh, energy management, and uh, DSIM software. Uh, our solutions uh, create great efficiencies in the data center, especially around capacity planning and energy management. It's Pelley with City Hub. We're an IT consultancy. We're in New York, London, Singapore, Hong Kong, and Dubai. Uh, we focus on data center efficiency, data center buy versus bill for our customers, primarily in the financial services space. We're also pretty deep in market data and low latency networks. We have a uh, general consulting practice as well as a data security practice. My name is Axel Kretschmer. I'm with Strata Electric. I'm the regional director for systems engineers in that company. And if you know Strata Electric, we are a very large global company. Our mantra or vision is energy management, making it safe, reliable, productive, efficient, and green. And um, we own very many brands that you probably know, like APC, MGE, Square D, PowerLogic, and that's all part of our groups of products that um, we're trying to build data, help build data centers that are easy to maintain, easy to operate, and are very reliable. Good afternoon, my name is Jeff Hecht. I'm the Regional Sales Manager for Vigilant Corporation. Uh, we concentrate uh, specifically on the cooling aspects of a data center and providing the first uh, artificial intelligence adaptive um, control system for cooling within the data center. Great, thank you. So a lot of great expertise here. I told them we want to make this interactive. We want to see them wrestle down to the ground when they disagree with things. So let's start with a fairly broad question uh, to the panel there. So first part is, you know, what are you seeing from enterprises that's driving demand from a, a data center perspective? And as you think about architecture and infrastructure, you know, what are some of the new requirements that you're seeing as they go out to look at, whether it be power, cooling, any other of the technology, infrastructure deployment inside the data center? So the demand, and what do you see changing? Uh, we'll start that at first. Why don't we change the order? <laughs> um, one of the things that we found is that a large number of our clients, uh, data centers are overcooled and trying to reach some of the new ASHRAE standards like 80.6 at the inlet side of the rack is something that's very scary to most people. And having a tool that allows you to be able to do that and reach those levels of efficiency is something that we're able to provide. We do that independently as well as in conjunction with companies like Schneider and Raritan by utilizing some of their sensors and some of their data in order to feed our system. Why don't we just go right, right on down? Okay, so one, one of the things that we're seeing is uh, kind of some of the trends is consolidation. <coughs> Many more large, extra large data centers are being built versus small, medium scale all the place. There's a lot of that going on, as well as a lot of trend to economization on all, on all sides. Actually, 90.1, if you're familiar with it, is going to become law sooner or later, locally. And I see a lot of trends, look, people looking into making their uh, making their cooling very efficient and, and maximizing what they can get for quote unquote free cooling. So we're seeing a lot of our clients that are actually moving to a private cloud. And the impact there within the data center is a lot of consolidation. We're seeing a lot of physical servers moving to highly dense belayed servers, which uh, obviously is impacting power and cooling within the data center and redesigning how the data center space looks. So a lot of work around private cloud implementation, we're finding that um, 
uh, is taking off fairly rapidly. Yeah, we're seeing uh, very similar trends. Uh, the uh, power requirements in data center are really skyrocketing, where we used to walk in and see a 2KW or 5KW rack. That's now 30KW, and we realize a lot of organizations are not equipped and they don't have the infrastructure and capacity available uh, to manage the increased density in the data center. So we're seeing uh, trends away from uh, single phase 120 into three phase 220 and uh, 400 volts to get more power to the rack and uh, more capacity out of existing data centers. I guess kind of to reiterate what they said, a lot of what we're seeing, especially internationally, is large consolidation projects just for the efficiencies. And probably I think efficiency is the big word that we see, whether it be from an IT perspective, an infrastructure perspective, cooling perspective, or even a personnel expense you know, perspective. There's no company that says, here's more, do less. We always, uh, you know, everybody strives to do more. So that is driving up bandwidth. It's definitely changing the way we design and lay out data centers and look at the data center space as a whole. And I think probably the, the biggest shift is getting all of those different budget silos and all those different departments to start thinking of the data center as an ecosystem where people actually do talk to each other. Yeah, to your point, Gary, there's a lot of converging going on between the different, or just three silos, right? Like team facilities, building management, it's all exactly. growing. It's all going together, and that requires, of course, new software platforms. They all have to play well together on the playground. We we, we've yet to see the internal real estate uh, departments play with the IT groups. <laughs> we've come. We, we've seen many um, debates in conference rooms going over how much power IT is demanding for a new facility, and what the, the real estate folks are saying you're not getting. Exactly. Okay, and that's a problem because IT understands the business requirement. And the guys who you know want to build these huge facilities don't don't get it. That's that's my take on it. That's well, you know, depending to ge geographically where they go, I've already they lost control. Have that. A lot of power. This is great. I've lost control. <laughs> <laughs> or did you want to participate? This is great. Where are you going? This is beautiful. <laughs> so so the argument often comes down with you know how do I get more with less, right? How how can I get more out of my existing infrastructure? And that requires really a deep understanding of what you already have. Uh, we find we walk into a lot of data centers and because there's no instrumentation, they don't even understand their capacity. So you've got to benchmark and monitor it closely before you can start making. So, so Keith, decisions. that's a great point. So all, I've heard all these talk about consolidation. Every CIO I speak about is talking about some type of data center consolidation going from 10 to 2. But you know, what happens, I've got this legacy data center that you know, is not very well powered. It's got some cooling channel challenges. Can I upgrade that facility? I mean, what, what do you recommend to clients you work with, and what do you do with those legacy data centers? Sure, the, the clients that we work with, it, it gets very expensive if you're going to wholesale upgrade that. It's also expensive to move to a new data center. So, unfortunately, you're forced to utilize you know what you have. So we look for efficiencies within the existing infrastructure, and the biggest one that, that we find is that most customers don't know what they, they, they have. You know, they don't have an understanding. They don't have a benchmark. A lot of the data centers were planned around derated nameplate data, and they're using that as a guideline. You know, once we put uh, granular instrumentation at the U level, then they can really understand, hey, you know what, I do have additional capacity. And they can start to make intelligent changes around getting the most out of what they already have without a uh, forklift overall. And I think that's true, especially from a virtualization standpoint, because you know you have to monitor what you have because you might be end of lifeing your most efficient pieces of equipment. So it's not really about CPU utilization anymore. It's more an equation of CPU utilization to what you're actually getting out of that box. It, exactly. You need to be able to look at the rack and understand: is this a Prius or is it a Hummer? Right. Um, what kind of mileage am I getting out of this IT equipment? So you made a good point that the key word is benchmarking. I like when you say that because that's really the, the key to do anything about efficiency going forward, right? You, gotta, you have to know where you are, where you stand. And it also includes, of course, the power distribution upstream, right? switch gear, UPSs, the coding plant, all that. You, you have to have some means of creating a benchmark and then measuring yourself against it. And, and a lot of time you end up with a stopgap too. You know, you might have one facility that's near capacity you might go to a colo facility for additional services or to take advantage of like, you know, WAN as a service, kind of like you guys do, so that you've got something to get you there. And there's typically, I think, the migration cycle for 
where you are today at capacity is definitely changing for where you're going to be in five years and it becomes a much more looked at plan now that you have tools to fix what you can measure. So, so to that point, I hear now about benchmarking, understanding what you have. So tell me how from clients you know, today, they, they come in, even to a Talix facility, and they say, hey, I need 500 k dub, but then when you look at what they're actually drawing is nowhere near that. So well, what's the difference? I mean, can the equipment really support the power requirements that these companies think they have? Are they really benchmarking? Really, what are we seeing towards you know, power utilization and how much power <coughs> customers can really draw? Based on You're getting a lot of that based on old data from where they were five years ago to where they are today, right? But what they don't realize is everything's getting more efficient. You look at supercomputers. You know, IBM's got one now. It's 50 kilowatts in a cabinet, and it requires no supplemental cooling because the liquid cooling's on the processor. So if you look at, you know, if you say, well, 10 years ago I had X. Now I need X based, you know, this is what I'm building out for because I think in 10 years that's what I'm going to need. That's what's really shifting because everybody's getting more energy efficient. So if you plan for those old capacities, you're missing something in the middle. So Intel talks about those inhaling chips and they're supposed to be more efficient. Are we really seeing that? I mean, it can't be used for every application. So yeah, there's this debate, you know, do the data centers need more power or don't they? I mean, do we really need to build out to 300 watts a foot or greater or is it really 150 watts and or is it 2 kW to a cabin or is it 10? What, 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 what are you folks seeing? I think the natural trend is to, to use every bit of capacity that you have. You know, regardless of what technologies you deploy, you tend to head that way to more, more, more. Um, when we looked at virtualization, you know, the, the key issue was space. People were trying to recover space, and immediately we said, okay, once they virtualize, they're going to free up a lot of space. Well, that really didn't happen. You know, they virtualized, and then they started to expand the virtualized devices that they had. So I think the natural trend is that people always push the limits of the capacity that they have, regardless of the technology. That so yeah, so the virtualization can in some cases free up some space, but what, what does happen, it, it impacts the power. So you have these high density roads, exactly. right, at 15 to 30 kW. That's correct. right. So we'll and, and so you're really just shifting, you know, yep. you're kind of shifting that, that, that power. But just, just one other point with, um, uh, with the, um, the data centers, uh, it's understanding what you're running in the data center in terms of the application workload. Because uh, we find that uh, large financials, for instance, are, they run apps that <laughs> are legacy apps that are no longer required. But they're still turned on and they're still running in the data center. So, you know, we go through these massive assessments and we uncover huge amounts of you know workload that isn't necessary. And unless you undertake this type of project, right, to do this assessment, understand what you're running, you're just moving, you know, you're moving from one, you're moving legacy from here, and you're moving to your colo or to or to a new facility. Perfect point.